Hello and thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. In the previous videos, we have covered the SAP FICO overview, where we have covered all the sub modules within SAP Finance and Controlling. We will now look into every sub module in detail along with the demo to understand in a better way. In this video, we are going to start with Accounts Payable. The training objective of this video will be the following. The participants are expected to understand SAP Accounts Payable concept and the processes. We will cover Vendor Master Data Maintenance, Logistics Invoice Verification, Consignment, Finance Direct Invoicing, Invoice Parking and Posting, Tolerance Limit Settings, Payment Difference Settings, Down Payments, Resolving Parked or Blocked Invoices, Invoice Releasing, Outgoing Payments, Document Reversal, Special GL and Accounts Payable Reporting. We will start with Accounts Payable Purchase to Pay Cycle. You will often hear the terminology P2P as well. P2P is nothing but purchase to pay. In Accounts Payable, we are talking about the relations with the vendors and all the transactions which take place with our vendors, which means if you are a part of an organization, you are someone who is purchasing goods or services from a vendor and hence the cycle is called purchase to pay, which means right from purchasing till the last stage of paying, there is a whole cycle which is involved in a vendor relation. In SAP finance terms, it is called accounts payable. As you see on the screen, there is a process on the SAP materials management side, which slowly diverts towards SAP Finance. So it starts with a requisition on SAP MM side and then it moves on to creating a purchase order, then receiving the goods from the vendor, then invoicing. The invoice is sent by the vendor in this case to the organization who is purchasing. This invoice is booked in the SAP system either manually or automatically and finally the payment is made to the vendor either automatically or manually. We will discuss these finance stages in detail going forward in this presentation. Let us first discuss what are the different kind of roles and responsibilities. Accounts payable is not just one person's job. In fact, it is not even a job of just a team of four to five people. It involves various roles and various people from different teams combined to complete the accounts payable role, the accounts payable cycle. First and foremost, you need an AP accountant. An AP accountant is someone who is responsible for parking and posting the documents in the system, the vendor invoices and the credit memos in the system. This person is also responsible to display any reports in the accounts payable area. They're responsible to display invoices or to display the vendor master data details at the company code level. On the rightmost column, you will observe there's something called position. This is a very generic column. In some companies, they are called analyst accounts payable, but they may be called something else in different companies. So this column should not be taken as a thumb rule. But yes, the first and the second column gives you a very clear idea what is a duty of every different kind of role. The second role that we have here is Accounts Payable Master Data Administrator. This person is responsible not only for displaying the vendor master data, 
but also for maintaining and deleting any vendor master data details. Of course, this person should not do any such deletions or changes to the master data without any necessary approvals. Thirdly, you will see there's someone called Treasury Admin. This person is mainly responsible for matters related to payments or displaying data or managing the bank master data or displaying any treasury reports. Next, we have the AP supervisor. A supervisor is a much higher role compared to the others because in this case, you're not just allowed in SAP to display documents, but in fact, you're allowed to post documents as well as post any clearing. This role mainly involves, as you see on the screen, posting, releasing, maintaining any reversal documents or making payments, etc. This person also has the authority to generate accounts payable reports in the system. The next role is an accounts payable accountant. Over here, this accountant is responsible only for parking the documents. And the next role is the master data admin. Over here, this person is allowed to only maintain and delete the master data. These are at a corporate or a manager level, which means that they do not have to only display as the other roles at a junior level, but they're allowed to also maintain and delete any master data. Similarly, you also have an AP supervisor manager role. Next, we have the reconciliation account. We have covered very briefly what exactly does reconciliation account mean in our overview. The reconciliation account is nothing but a link between the subledger and the GL. So the reconciliation account is assigned to the master data in subledger. How it works is the vendor master data has in there assigned a reconciliation account to it. On the other hand, this reconciliation account is nothing but a common GL account which can combine a number of vendors in itself. This means it is not a one-on-one -on -one relationship. There can be multiple vendors which are assigned to only one reconciliation account. We will come to this as an example in the next slide. Next, we will consider the vendor account group. A vendor account group is nothing but an accumulation of different kind of vendors that a company has. Vendors are assigned in group accounts in which each of this group account will have a default reconciliation account. This means that there will be, let's say, for example, a trade third party group. Within this, there can be one or more reconciliation accounts, which are specific to only that group. We will next have a different group called non-trade third party, wherein the reconciliation accounts are now different than this first group, which we saw. In this way, there can be multiple vendor account groups in the organization. This depends on the management and the finance team of the company, how many vendor account groups do they need. They can have only three or four vendor account groups, depending on how they want to report it, or they can even have 20 account groups. This slide shows you how exactly a vendor account group is then divided in terms of the number ranges. For example, if a vendor is starting with 100001, that means that vendor belongs to a group called Trade Third Party, ZKTP, and the number range is K1. So there are different steps involved in this type of configuration. 
the first step is we have to create an account group and we have to give it a name. The second step is we have to create a number range called K1 and we have to give it a range. For example, 1 lakh to 2 lakh 99,999. And now that we have two different details in place, in SAP, we will assign a number range to an account group. Similarly, you see it has been done for all the different account groups as below. You will notice that there is no overlap between account numbers. If an account number ends here with 299999, then it has to start with 3 lakh in the next line. This means that there is no overlap between different account number ranges. You can also have number ranges, not just in numbers, but also in letters. This means you can have a vendor called Z001, or you can have a vendor called V112. This is possible to do when the account number range is in letters, as in the last row over here. Let's go to SAP now where we will check how exactly the vendor account groups are created as well as how they're assigned to different number ranges. You will now see that we have in SAP an option of defining account groups for vendors. This is available in SAP under financial accounting, AR and AP, vendor accounts, master data, preparations for creating vendor master data, and the first option is to define the account groups. Without creating the account groups, you cannot move ahead to do any other vendor master data configuration. Hence, this is very important. Once we click on this, you will get an option to either enter a new entry or you can change any of the existing entries. Let's say we have created an account group called vendors number 0001 as I have highlighted over here. You can double click on this and this will take you to a screen where you can change the field status of every field within the vendor master data. For example, I can double click on general data and I can double click on address. It says over here that the name of the vendor in the master data is a required entry. This means it is mandatory to write the name of the vendor. And of course, why would we have any vendor without a name? Hence, this is very important. Whereas the other entries are optional. For example, you can choose to not enter the street or the district or the PO box, etc. about the vendor. Most companies will always have the postcode city, the street, as well as other things like the PO box as mandatory. But in this example, we don't have it. And we will see this in a practical way now. If I go back, you can also change that for other tabs within the vendor master. For example, you can have the payment details like the bank details as mandatory if you want. In this case, we see it has been set as optional. Since this is a training environment, you will find that most of the details are optional so that you can train the different people accordingly. That's how you create an account group. You name it and you have a description for it and then you set the different field statuses. Now that your account group is created, the next job would be to create a number range and that is over here. Create number ranges for vendor accounts. If you click on that, it asks you whether you want to 
change any existing intervals or you want to display them. Let us go in the change mode. Now you have the right to make any changes to the account groups over here. But do keep in mind that there should be no overlap of account groups from one to another. This means that I cannot create an account group which is ending with a number which is already starting over here. Let's take an example. Let's try to create an account group over here. It says 6 and ending with 101 till 200. Let's try to end this account group with the number over here which is 7 and all zeros. If I replace it and I press enter, it says enter intervals without overlap, which means it is trying to warn me that I cannot enter any intervals with an overlap. I have to change it now. Yep. Yeah? So that's how an overlap is not allowed in the system and we will revert it back to what it was. So this is how you create a number range. As you saw earlier, we give it a two digit or a two alphanumeric number over here. And then we set a range against it. You can choose to have the number range created internally by SAP, or you can choose an external option. External means that I can number the vendor myself. If I want a particular vendor to be number 450, I can enter that manually when I create the vendor. But in other cases, which are internal, the number is automatically generated by SAP. Which means when I try to create a vendor and I enter all the details like name, address, etc. and I save it, SAP will pick up the next available number in the queue. In this case, the next available number will be 100646 because till the entry 645, we already have existing vendors. So this is how you create a vendor number range. If I go back, the last step over here is to assign number ranges to vendor account groups. So you have the account groups created, you have the number ranges created. Now you need to assign a number range to the vendor account group. This is a very simple process if you have done the first two steps correctly. Now we need to just add an entry for the vendor account group and add a number range against it. You can also choose the number range from the drop down option if you do not remember the ranges already. Once you do this, you need to click on this save button and then go back. So this is a summary of how exactly the account groups are created and a number range is set for these account groups. This will help you create the vendor master in a very smooth way. We will now stop this video here and we will continue with the next slides in the next video. Thank you very much for watching Edupedia World Videos.